So thieves are getting a whole lot smarter in the ways that they break into homes. And a lot of times they view your vehicle as the master key essentially in order to get into your home. So in this video, not only am I gonna show you exactly how they do it and what they use, but I'm also gonna show you some very easy and inexpensive solutions in order to not only just protect your house and your family, which is really important, but also protect your other assets such as your vehicles. All right, so for this first example, they'll just walk up to your car and like everybody knows, they'll just smash the glass out, whether they use a brick or a rock, a spark plug, whatever it takes to get the window broken. They know the car alarm's gonna go off, they have limited time, so it's called a smash and grab. They're able to get access to your vehicle, get inside, and then of course, if you have anything valuable, they're gonna take that, and then they're gonna go through your center console, your glove box, under your seats, anywhere that might have valuables in them, they're gonna go and try and find those, but they're not gonna stop there. A lot of times they're also going to look up here on your visor and this is where most people have their garage door openers. They're going to steal the garage door opener. They're going to take that with them. Then they're going to go over to the other side of the vehicle. They're going to go straight for the glove box, open it up. They're going to take your registration, your insurance card if it's in here. And then that's not all. A lot of times they're going to steal your owner's manual. And then after they have everything that they want, then they're just gonna flee the scene. Now, some of you might be asking yourself, why in the world would they want all of this information? Well, for one thing, they want your garage door opener because they wanna be able to open up your garage. And since a lot of times when these smash and grabs happen, they're away from your house in a parking lot somewhere, they know you're probably gonna be tied up for a bit, not only at the event, but then once you realize your vehicle has been broken into, you're gonna call the police and you're gonna be gone for a pretty long time. They also want your insurance card and your registration because there's a lot of valuable information on these documents, especially your address. While you're there, they can just input the address that's on your registration and insurance card and drive right to your house, get into your garage and do whatever they want. Now, a lot of you might be wondering why in the world would they want my owner's manual out of my vehicle? Now, not all owner's manuals are gonna be valuable to somebody, but there are certain makes and models and owner's manuals that inside of those owner's manuals are any kind of verification number, serial numbers, anything that they can use in order to claim that your vehicle is theirs to the manufacturer and try and get them to send them a programmed set of keys. All right, so another scenario is your vehicle is parked in your driveway, you're at home, or maybe you're even out at an event somewhere. And depending on your level of comfort and how secure you want your vehicle to be, what a lot of people do, and I know this is gonna be hard to believe for a lot of you, but this is a real problem. There's a lot of local governments and sheriff's offices that are literally sending out reminders to people to lock their vehicles. They just leave the doors to their vehicles unlocked. And trust me, this happens on a nightly basis where people are going around neighborhoods and just pulling on handles to see which ones will open. But once they get inside, not only are they gonna do everything that I showed in the first example, but then if we get inside, and say this is just sitting in your driveway, all they have to do a lot of times on these newer vehicles is look up and you see these buttons here with these little dots on them. A lot of manufacturers include this on their vehicles. This is called a home link system and you can program these to your garage door. So instead of having to have your standard garage door opener like this one, you don't have to have this in your vehicle in order to open your garage door. These are very convenient so that you don't have to have those remotes. But if this is just sitting in your driveway, all they have to do is push one of these buttons and it's gonna open up your garage door. So I highly recommend never programming these. I know it's convenient, but you literally have a key to your house just sitting in your car at all times. So I have another example after this that will probably blow a lot of people's minds, but let's get into the solutions for these two examples that I just showed you so that none of us are vulnerable to somebody being able to easily break in. Number one, your owner's manual, why is it in your vehicle? I know we all do this, but if you think about it, there's really no reason for this to be in the vehicle other than it's just a convenient place that when we're working on it, if we need to get some information out of it, then we know exactly where it is and it's in the vehicle we're working on. I would say this is the least of the concerns because what I talked about is pretty hard to do and there are some safeguards in place, but I'm just here to tell you this is something that they have done in the past and they have done so successfully. So just as an added measure, I would just remove these out of the vehicle and have them somewhere that's easily accessible in your home. 
as far as your registration, your insurance cards, anything that has personal information on them, take pictures of them. Keep them on your phones. Typically your phone is locked so people can't get access to it. Aside from that, if possible, it's also recommended to just put these in a wallet or your purse and carry it on your person if you choose to. Another solution would be a lot of vehicles, you can either buy a safe that gets connected inside of your vehicle so that they can't be stolen or broken into, or some vehicles already have lockable storage on them. Now, a lot of glove boxes lock, but I do not recommend storing anything of any value in a glove box. They are very easily to break into and open. Not only is it easy, but it's actually pretty quick to do. Now, what can we do with our garage remotes? Well, for one thing, if you're able to just take these in with you each night into the house, so they're not just sitting in your vehicle, that's an option. Or anytime you leave and go into the store, remove your garage remotes. But I know that sounds like a pain because it is a pain not only to do, but just to remember. But if you wanna be safe and make sure a thief doesn't have easy access once they've broken into your vehicle, these need to be out of the vehicle. So what can we use in place of those? So some things that I recommend using or getting over using these. For one thing, you could get a wireless garage door opener such as MyQ or Aladdin depending on the manufacturer of your garage door opener. Between those two brands with the MyQ and the Aladdin, they can cover and work with pretty much all of your standard garage door openers. They do use Wi-Fi. You'll have an app on your phone that you're able to open your garage door using your phone. A downside of those is sometimes Wi-Fi goes down or the connection isn't very good and it won't work. But that might be where an outside keypad comes in the handy as your backup. But one item that I really like that will work every single time are these right here. Now, this doesn't look like much. It just looks like a black piece of plastic. But this is actually a garage door opener that can be programmed to your garage door. It does actually have this cover here that you just flip down. And once you flip it down, you have access to using four different buttons. Or if you have four different garage doors, you can program it to this one single remote. And the dust cover is nice because obviously you can't get dust in there and inadvertently push any buttons. These are designed to go on your keychain or something that always is with you. So I definitely recommend these because these are reliable. They're gonna work every single time as long as the battery's still good just like your standard garage remote. And of course, I'll have links for these and everything else that you've seen and we'll see here in a moment. In this video, I'll have links for everything down in the description down below where you can check them all out for yourself whenever you want. Hey, really quickly, if you're finding value in this video so far and you're just finding some of this stuff to be a little bit shocking, if you could do me a huge favor, all that I ask is that you give the video a thumbs up right down below or leave me a question or comment down in the comment section. It really does help the video out to spread out to other people and hopefully we're able to help them out with this as well. I really appreciate it. Let's get back into it. All right, so for the next example, it involves this right here. This is just your standard keychain, but this right here is how a lot of thieves and burglars are able to get into your vehicle and then therefore into your house. And I don't mean that they steal this physically. I'm talking about these key fobs where they're nice and secured inside of your house, but they're still able to use them to not only gain access to your vehicle, but they can also use them to steal your vehicle and drive off with them. And that's because these smart key fobs right here, they emit a signal. That's why when you have, especially like a newer vehicle, I mean, even in the last 10 years or so, this has been a capability. You just have to have this in your pocket. You can push a button on the door, it unlocks all the door handles. And of course, this also acts as the key for the ignition. Well, thieves have figured out a way in order to get devices that aren't super readily available yet, but they are available. And this is something that is finally starting to reach some news stations because this is not as uncommon as you might think to where thieves and eventual burglars can use an amplifier that then takes the signal signal that is being emitted from this key fob right here and they're able to basically download it and copy that signal into a device that is then able to take that copied signal and emit it just as though they're carrying your key fob. 
And in some cases, they're able to detect these up to a thousand feet away from wherever you put this at night or during the day, wherever you hang up your keys. It's possible that within a thousand feet, they're able to detect that signal, copy it, and use it to get into your vehicle, which then, of course, if they get in your vehicle, they're able to then open your garage. Most of the time, people do not lock the door that goes from their garage to their house because they're depending on their garage door. So then they have access to your house as well. And if they're gutsy enough, they will just drive off with the vehicle as well with all of your stuff in it. So what do we do about this? How do we stop someone from stealing a signal from up to a thousand feet away? So the number one thing that I recommend and I actually use myself is I use one of these black boxes right here. Now this box isn't just any standard box. Just the standard box is not really gonna block the signal at all. This is specially made in order to block the signal. It's what's referred to as a Faraday box. And if we open this up, as you can see, we've got some thicker material that's in here. It's actually pretty rigid. And that material is designed to block the signal from these key fobs from being emitted and therefore being able to be amplified, copied, and used. But don't just take my word for it. I'm gonna show you some examples and we're gonna test this to see if it in fact does block the signal and my vehicle is not able to unlock or start. All right, so here I am at my truck door. I've got my key fob out. It's emitting that signal. The truck is recognizing it and I've got the doors locked right now. As you can see, it's not opening up, but you see this button on here. As long as this is emitting the signal, the truck is pulling it in. And if I push that button, since it knows that the key fob is next to it, I don't know if you heard that, it unlocked the door and I'm able to open it. Same thing when I wanna lock the door, just push that button and now it won't open. So with that door still being locked, that's where then I will take my case and I will open it up, put the keys inside of the case, close it up, lock it down. And now when I go and try and open it, see it's still locked, if I push that button, no matter how many times I push that button, it is not going to unlock the door. The truck is not sensing the signal that is being sent, even though it's right here inside of this box. And so I can do this all day, pushing this button and trying to unlock it, and it's just not gonna do it. But then if I just open the case, I don't even have to pull it out. I push that button, it just unlocked, and now I'm able to open the door. All right, so I've got my keys out of the box. It's sitting up there. They're just sitting on the steering wheel. All I have to do is I just have to push the push to start button down here. and the truck will start up. But let's go ahead and turn the truck off. I will now take my keys and I will put them into the black box up here on top of the dashboard. Then I will close and lock it down. So it's sitting up there on top inside of the box. Now when I go and push the button, it's not doing anything. And now I'm also getting a notification on my cluster that no key found, try again. So let's go ahead and try again. Push it some more. It's not working. And now I got another notification that just says no key found. Even though it's sitting right up here on top inside of this box, as soon as I open it, I'm able to pull it out. And there is the key fob right there. Now when I go and start it, as you can see, it now starts up. So I definitely highly recommend picking one of these up. We're able to fit both our sets of keys inside of this box so that it cannot emit the signal. They do also make pouches that you can put on each individual key fob that are also able to block the signal from being put out. But I personally really like this box a whole lot better. So again, I'll have links for this box and also those pouches I told you about that can also block the signal, along with these keychain remotes. I'll have links for everything down in the description down below. If you're interested in anything you saw in the video, you just click on those links and it will take you directly to those items for you to check out for yourself. Now, if you found value in this video, then you're definitely gonna find value in another video that I did in the past, where I go over some techniques that actually have been in the news. They're very well known about, but a lot of times homeowners have no clue that burglars are even able to use this technique to get into their garage. And that's by using something as simple as a coat hanger or a piece of wire. They're able to gain access to the garage. So if you're interested in that and some techniques and some things that you should really do in order to keep your garage safer and how to stop that from happening, click on this video right over here. When you click on it, it will take you directly to that.
So hopefully you did find value in this. And if you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.